Hi, welcome to The Property Gurus. This video is the first in a series dealing with the issue of builders. A builder is absolutely critical to the success of your project. Finding the right builder, making sure they've been given enough detail, that they understand what it is you're looking to achieve, and making sure you've got all your costings and all of your brief correctly scoped out is really important. So we're going to go through all of those issues. But the very first issue that you need to address when you're working on your project is how to find the right builder. So today's video, we're going to look at three options that you've got. Now, the first of those, and we'll come on to it in a minute, is the obvious one, which is recommendations. So usually people expect when you're looking at a project that you've, you've got tons of different recommended builders. That isn't always the case. And we know from our own experience, if you're doing projects in different areas, you've just moved somewhere, or maybe you just don't know any builders uh, or anybody who's had a good experience with builders, but we'll be able to solve that issue for you. We've, we've developed really good methodology for finding the right builder. And the other issue, which we'll get into in a minute, is that just because somebody recommends a builder to you, doesn't mean that that is the correct builder for your project. All projects are different and different builders have different skill sets. So we'll go through all of these issues in this video. So let's talk about the three different options that you've got to find the right builder for your job. The first and probably the best option is recommendations. If you know somebody who's used the builder recently, and is prepared to recommend them, then that is a great starting point for you to start looking into whether that is the right builder for you. However, just because somebody had a good experience with a builder does not mean that you should only speak to that builder and that they're the right builder for you. There's a number of different factors that you need to take into account. The first is, what is your job? Is your job exactly the same as the job that the person who recommended that builder has had done. So as an example, if you're looking to do a full renovation of your house with a rear extension and the loft conversion and new heating system and basically rebuilding your house entirely from scratch and somebody's recommending a builder to you that did some work in their garden or did a patio or did um, some renovation work, then that doesn't necessarily mean that they've got the right people and the right skills to be able to do your job. So you need to look at the relevance of the building firm who's been recommended and whether or not they have exactly the right skill set for your job. The next point is cost. So everybody has different budgets. So you may be you may have a much lower budget or a much higher budget than somebody who's recommended that builder to you. And it might be that that particular builder isn't the right builder for you because of the level of their quote. Some building firms charge a lot more than others. We've been doing this for a long time and we get multiple quotes on every job. And the spectrum between those quotes is often quite significant. You may have anything from a 50 to 100% difference in price between one building firm and another for exactly the same job. It sounds ridiculous, sounds unbelievable, but it's true. You will be amazed, if you get a lot of quotes, you'll be amazed at the difference in the prices. And this is one of the critical things when dealing with builders to find the right builder is, firstly, you want to get the right price, for sure. Everybody wants to pay you know, as little as possible. But to do that, you need to make sure that your job is, the specification on your job is provided in exact detail. So you need to put in all of your requirements. So if you're wanting underfloor heating, wooden flooring, fitting, new kitchen, double glazed windows, all that spec needs to go into the brief that you give to each of the builders. Because that means when they give you your quote, it has got all of the exact detail you need in there. And every quote is like for like. If you just say to a builder, 
I want an extension, then there is so much scope in there for them to be able in the future, once they've started your job to say, oh, but you never specified that you wanted wooden flooring and underfloor heating and double glazing. They're all going to cost extra. And then the quote that you had initially is not the final price that you'll pay. So you need to make sure that your brief is really detailed because then the quotes that you get will be comparable. And then you're looking at absolute numbers of this is what it's going to cost me rather than not knowing because there's going to be a lot of extras. The next thing to do is then to do some research on them. So they should have an online presence. These days, all building firms should have either a website, ideally. So a website will give you a good starting point to be able to have a look at some of their the pictures from their work and just see how professional they look and feel from the website. You can tell a good website usually means they've spent some money on it and that they're professional and that they care about their public image. If they don't have a website, then they should have a presence on some websites. So there's a whole host of different websites that people can provide reviews for builders on. So find their name on these websites and then check out the reviews and see what people who've actually employed them to do jobs are saying about them. And hopefully you'll find lots of positive feedback and lots of good news and really nice comments about them. But make sure you do that research. The next step after you've done your initial online search is to do is to meet them and to actually physically inspect some of their work. So obviously speak to whoever the main person is at that firm and ask if you can then contact any of their previous clients or current jobs. So it's important to do both of those things. You look at the previous clients because they will you'll see the finished product and you'll be able to speak to people who've had the work done some time ago. It might be a few months, it could be a few years previously. But why that's important, firstly, you can see how good it looks. And secondly, you can check out what the aftercare service was like. So in all building projects, there tends to be some snagging. There'll be something that doesn't quite go right or something that needs to be fixed later. And a good builder will always come back and fix those things and it won't be a problem. And it just relieves the stress for everybody. A bad builder won't care, won't come back and won't fix it. And therefore, the people who've had the job done won't be happy. So it's unlikely that you'll be given those people as a reference point. But if you are, then obviously that's a warning sign for you. The current work, so going to see a job that is actually ongoing right now, is also really important as your due diligence because you can see how those people are working. So if you turn up to somebody's house and they're having an extension fitted or a new kitchen, you'll be able to see how tidy the job looks, how professional the guys on site look, how they're actually going about doing the work. If it's really dusty environment or dirty or lots of debris everywhere, then that's not a good sign. If they're managing the work site well and keeping everything clean and tidy, then that's a positive. And you can speak to some of the tradesmen as well, not just the person who you're introduced to. So you can ask them how long they've worked for the company, whether they enjoy it, what their specialism is. There might be a carpenter or an electrician or a bricklayer. You can find out and you get a good feel for whether you like that firm, because those guys who are on site doing the job right now are the people who are going to be in your house for a long period of time. So they're the people that you're, you've got to be comfortable being around you, your kids, your family, your pets, whatever it is. You've got to be happy that they're going to be turning up at your house at eight o'clock in the morning every day and staying there all day. So it gives you a better feel for that firm and that company rather than just the spokesperson who may turn up in a suit and be very slick and good at sales. It's actually the people doing the work that you need to to find out whether or not you're comfortable with them. So on the recommendation front, make sure you do the research. The other issue for recommendation is whether or not that firm is local. So it might be that your friend or relative or somebody who's recommended a firm, they may tell you that the company is fantastic and it might be true. 
But if those guys live a long way from your house and it's not local for them, then that can cause you a problem because builders generally, the guys who are on the tools who are doing the job are generally not very well paid. You know, they're earning a living, they're doing a good job, but it tends not to be something that they're earning a fortune doing. The, the guys at the top might be earning a lot of money, but the people actually doing the day-to-day -day job are just being paid a living wage and you know earning a reasonable living. So those guys don't want to be spending two hours a day traveling to and from a site to work. They want to be working relatively local. So in my experience, if you get a local firm with local people, it's a much better outcome. They'll be happier, they'll turn up on time, They'll stay later if they need to. They won't need to disappear off for long periods to go and do something or pick some materials up from back where they're located. So it generally is a, a lower stress environment if you've got people who are local who are happy with the location of your house. So find out where they're based. Find out whether or not they've done any jobs in your area before you go about talking in more detail about um, how they're going to do your job. So that's a really important part. And then the next part, which links into that, is how busy are they? How many other jobs have they got on right now? Because with builders, the problem we all have is that they have to keep themselves busy. They need to keep their diaries full. They need to keep all the people they employ fully occupied. So they do tend to take on more jobs than just one at a time. The problem with that for you is that if they take on too many jobs, so if they have three or four or five or six jobs simultaneously, it can mean that they don't have enough people to actually send people to your house, to your site. So if they become overloaded with work and there's an issue or they have some people leave or there's turnover of staff, those sort of issues, it can cause massive issues for you. So... The best scenario is a building firm that limits the number of jobs they take on, maybe only does one or two or three projects at the same time, and who are managing those jobs so that their timings are different. So it might be that one's at the start, one's in the middle, and one's towards the end if they're doing three jobs, and therefore they can move different people to different sites at different times, and it still works well for all parties. What you don't want is a firm taking on five or six jobs simultaneously, all starting at the same point, all needing the same tradesmen at the same time, because that's when it becomes a bottleneck and they won't have enough people to send to your job. So do the research, check out whether they've got good reviews, we've talked about that, whether or not they're, they're currently doing a job that looks good and is impressive. Go and have a look at all the jobs they've finished that you can. Speak to the previous clients, get some real feedback, not just from the builders themselves. And then make sure that they're local and they don't have too many other jobs. So all of those ingredients should enable you to turn a recommendation into something that should work for you. You know exactly what your job is. Just make sure they've got experience doing that and that they've got the availability, the capacity, and they're happy with the location of your property. If, you, if all of those issues are signed off, then you should have a building firm that is definitely worth, rec definitely worth considering. However, you always want to make sure you've got more than one option. So don't just go with the first recommendation and the only recommendation you've got. If other people recommend firms, then talk to them and do exactly the same process. Make sure you get at least three different quotes and then you can start working out which is the absolutely best one for you. So that's on the recommendation side of things. Hopefully that's given you a flavour as to the due diligence and the work that you need to do initially to make sure that a recommendation is suitable for you. The second option is to advertise your job. There are a number of websites that allow you to post your job and to match supply and demand in your area of people who need builders and builders who are looking for work. This has been a fantastic development um, and is something that we at the Property Gurus utilise all the time. It's really great because the difference to previously is that if you contact a builder and ask them to have a look at your job, it might be that they're very busy, 
they don't have time, they don't really want to work in your area because it's too far away from their patch. So there are a whole host of issues. These websites remove all of those problems because you tell people exactly what your job is, where it's located, and when you want to do it. And the builders then come back to you and confirm that they're interested. And if you do it correctly, you can get an indication of the price. So we'll just go through a bit more detail of that. So here in the UK, there are a number of different websites. If you type into Google, find a builder, then these websites are actively promoting themselves and will come up. So the largest ones are Rated People, My Builder and Book a Builder. So all of those websites, and there are lots of others, and I'm sure in every country around the globe, they have these type of websites now because it's big business. They take uh, either an upfront fee from the builder or some sort of payment once you've selected who you want to use for the job. So um, really useful resource. But the way these operate, you go onto that website. It's free to join as a homeowner and you can put a lot of detail about your job. And I would recommend putting as much detail as possible. So you can put the exact specifics of what you want. So there'll be no confusion later to say, oh, but I didn't realize that you wanted X, Y, Z. You can put as much detail as you want. It's generally, you can put something like 5,000 characters into these postings. So it's quite a lot of information. So go and put the detail in, make sure it's as specific as possible. So if you're wanting an extension, for example, you can say that you want either a flat roof or a pitched roof, that you want the kitchen to be included as part of the job as the installation of new kitchen, underfloor heating, wooden flooring, uh, the walls to be papered, plastered, wallpapered. You can have uh, LED lighting installed. All There's masses of detail that you can go into. And all of that will help you find the right people who can do all of those jobs. What you don't want is to find somebody who's good at doing half of it and says, oh, I can't help you with the lighting or, or whatever it might be. So put the detail in, you post the job, and then you get responses from local builders. And why that's positive? Firstly, you can check out who they are by looking on the website. So on these websites, all of these builders have to register. They have to be approved by the website. So you've got a first point of due diligence done already for you. Once they're approved, they then can post jobs and do jobs. So the best ones will have a track record on that website. So they will have been on that website maybe for two or three years, maybe longer, and they will have a history of reviews. So you can look back at their profile and check out all those reviews, see how many stars they've got, what the feedback's been, whether there's been any negative comments. If they do have negative comments, generally the builder will have the opportunity to respond, so there may be mitigating circumstances to explain why an issue arose or what was ha what happened afterwards. So it's really useful source of doing the research all on your PC. So you can just go on on your phone or your PC and check out whether or not you like the look of that builder from their reviews. You can also see galleries, photos of work they've done. So it's a really quick way of checking out somebody's work, somebody's feedback. Um, and this is, can all be done whilst you're sitting at your desk. You don't have to pick up the phone. You don't have to speak to anybody. So even if you're just thinking about doing your job now, if you're just at the early stages of considering doing some work, you could go on and post the job and get back some responses from builders and you'd be able to get a feel for them. So generally speaking, the, pe the builders who respond will be local. They know where your house is, generally, for the from the uh, postcode. They know the general area. So they'll, they're, they're confirming that, yes, they're happy to come to your area. Yes, they're available. And yes, they can do the job you need. So you've already got all of that due diligence we talked about earlier for the recommendation. That's all done for you. And you can see their reviews and photos. And you've opened up, you've already gone to that next stage of, of sifting out people you don't like. So you might get 15 responses. You might get 15 different building firms who are interested. And of those, you, you generally have to select a small number. So it might be you select five to go to the next stage, which would be to contact them 
So if you select five, you pick the best five for you, the ones you like the look of, and then those five will contact you. They'll either email or phone you, and then you can start having more detailed discussions along the lines of what we've done previously, where you ask them what jobs they've done, whether you can speak to some of those clients, if you can go and have a look at those houses, and just you'll be able to go through the final parts of the due diligence we talked about earlier. So it's a really useful way of finding somebody to do your project really quickly. The other good thing, and one of the, this is a tip that we would definitely give you when dealing with these websites, is ask them for a ballpark indication of the price. Now, they won't want to give you that generally because they'll come back and say, ah, oh, we need to see the job and I can't really give you a quote based on just what you've written in your details. But if you've given enough information, so if you've said all the details of I want the extension, I want it built in brick, I want sliding glass doors at the back, I want a pitched roof, I want a fully installed kitchen, I want underfloor heating, I want wooden floors, I want, you know, if you give them a lot of detail, they should be able to give you an indication of the price. And it'll be a ballpark, it won't be exact, and it probably won't include um, anything that you need to supply. So you may need to supply the sliding glass doors or the kitchen or the flooring, but they will give you an indication. So if you ask that and you get 15 builders who respond, already you're getting a feel for whether it's somebody you like to deal with. So if, if 10 of those builders say, I can't give you a quote, I, I refuse to give you a quote, but five of them do give you some indication, then you can have a look at those numbers and see whether you think those numbers are in your budget. And if it's in your budget and all the other boxes are ticked, so you like the look of their previous work, they've got good reviews, everything else is feeling good, then they'll be one of the companies you select to have a chat with. You're only having a chat, so get five of them. Maybe it's in conjunction with the recommendation we talked about earlier, so you might have one or two from the recommended pile, and then you've got lots of options. You might have five or six or seven builders to talk to. Now, it sounds a lot, sounds a lot of hassle, but this is a big project and you want to make sure, as we said at the beginning, that you get the right people to do it. Because if you get the wrong people to do it, it will cause a lot of grief. There'll be a lot of stress. It could be a lot of cost. It, you know, worst case scenario, it could be a disaster where the builder doesn't finish the job and you have to go and find another builder to come in. You don't want any of that hassle. You want this to go as quickly and smoothly and efficiently as possible. So do the work now. It's easy. You know, you're just talking to people. They're, they're pitching to you for the business. They're the guys who need you to give them the money to do the job. So do the research. Speak to lots of builders. Don't feel intimidated or nervous because that's the way the world works. They have to pitch. For every deal they pitch, they probably win one out of every five or one out of every ten. So they know that's the way the system operates. They'll talk to you knowing it's not guaranteed that they will win your job. So it's OK to have seven or eight different builders to talk to. You might not want to, but certainly have seven or eight initially where online before you go and spot pe speaking to people or inviting them into your house. So definitely use these websites. They are a really useful tool to, to find people quickly and easily and speak to them, as, speak to the people as much as you want. You know, if you're uncomfortable, you're not quite sure, don't go with them. You know, if, if somebody gives you a bad feel or they're a bit abrupt or they're not very nice to deal with or they're slow, don't deal with them. You know, use somebody who you really like. They're going to be coming to your house every day for a long period of time. Use people that you can trust, that you like and that you believe are honest and can do a good job and who've got good reviews, good recommendations and you think can do the work for you. So the final, the, the other alternative online uh, there's a bit more work involved in this. The other alternative is to go to tradesmen's websites. So similar to the ones we talked earlier about where you post a job, this is slightly more involved. So these are websites that tradesmen are registered on where they have reviews posted and jobs posted, but you can't post your job. You have to contact the builder directly. So it's websites such as Checker Trade and Trust the Builder in the UK, there's there's lots of them. Trust the trader, sorry, trust the trade, not trust the builder. Um, there's lots of them globally. So these are basically an updated version of postings from builders to 
uh, advertise their services. So go on these websites if you're comfortable and happy to do more of your own due diligence. So you can go on and type in, I need a builder or a carpenter or a kitchen fitter or a bathroom fitter, whatever it is you're looking for. And it will throw up lots of firms in your area who have ratings on that website. So you find that they may have 20 or 30 or hundreds of jobs posted and you'll see how many star ratings they've got, what the feedback has been. Then you need to phone those, contact those people. You'll need to speak to them. You need to work out um, how, who you're going to choose. It's more difficult to use that system because you need to engage with people a far earlier. The other websites where you post a job are much easier to be able to sift people out. So from our point of view, we would recommend using the post a job system because it's easier to find people before you need to start speaking to them and inviting them to your house. You can use these other websites, but it's there's more work involved. You'll need to be uh, happier just phoning firms and asking them, you know, how busy are you? Because with the poster job system, they sh they shouldn't be responding to you unless they're looking for work and they need to find more jobs and they've got availability. With the ones where you're just phoning them, with they've got a good reputation, uh, they might be super busy. They might not be able to do your job for the next 12 months. So um, it's a slightly different flavor and a different approach. So it's up to you that the, the websites are useful. You can get you can gauge whether or not it's a good firm, but it's much easier if you can just post the job. OK, so the final point we'll make, and there's, there's, this video is the first of a series of videos. And there's lots of information you need to think about when talking to builders deciding which builders to use and you know selecting the right ones for your job. But one final tip, and we cover this more in detail on uh, one of our other videos, so have a look at our channel, The Property Gurus, is always ask the builder how they are structured. Because in the world of building, either a firm is employs everybody and all of those guys work for that company, that's not as common as it used to be. So maybe 100 years ago, that was the way things worked, maybe 50 years ago. But today, the world is very different. We're in the gig economy. A lot of people are self-employed. A lot of tradesmen work for themselves. And a lot of firms are subcontracting work. So you'll find that builders might take on your job, but they don't employ all of the people who are actually going to work in your house. So ask the builder how they are structured. And what you might find is that they have 10 employees who do general building work. So they might do things like your foundations and digging and concreting and carpentry and all, all the basic building works. But they subcontract out anything that's specialized. So they might. it's very common for a builder to subcontract out the electrics and the plumbing and also other issues, other areas. So Windows are usually subcontracted out. Sometimes groundworks are subcontracted out. So somebody will come in with a digger and do all of your foundation work. Uh, roofing is often subcontracted out. There's a whole host of jobs that can be passed on to other firms. It's important to find out from your builder that you're talking to how much they will do and how much is subcontracted to somebody else. Because the problem with subcontracting is they can't guarantee that it will be done on time and that the people will be available. If that subcontractor suddenly becomes very busy or loses some people or some other issue hits them, then they can fail to deliver and that can have a knock on impact to your project. So always ask the builder, how are you structured? How many people do you employ? What trades do you subcontract? And a good builder will be very open and honest about it and tell you that he subcontracts out all the electrics and all the plumbing but he's been using the same firm for the last 10 years and they've got 50 people working for that plumbers and he's never had a problem. And so that puts your mind at rest and you know exactly how your job is going to operate because what you don't want to do is sign up with a builder and within the first two weeks, you suddenly find out that they're not actually doing any of the work and they've subcontracted all of it and that you're now dealing with somebody you've never met before who you don't know, who probably isn't somebody who's been involved in those projects that have been reviewed. And so you've effectively got somebody in your house that you've done no research on. So it's imperative that you find out 
how the builder's structured, who's employed by the builder and who's going to be working in your house, which guys are going to do your job. OK, so hopefully that's given you a really good starting point to thinking about how to find the, the right builder for your project. So as just to recap, we think that the two best sources to find the right builder are recommendations and online websites. I would recommend using a combination. If you don't have any recommendations, then obviously just use the websites. But if you have some recommendations, then great, follow those up, but supplement them with some online research of your own because we found that not all builders are the same and that sometimes the same builder doesn't do as good a job on the next on the next project. So it doesn't always work that if somebody recommended them to you, that they will be brilliant on your job. So do your own research, look at six or seven or eight different options, and then pick the one that's the right one for you from both uh, the due diligence point of view, the research and the budget point of view. So make sure everything ticks your boxes. So we've been the Property Gurus. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. As we said, there'll be lots more videos in this How to Deal with Builders series. So look out for those and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.